Hi, welcome and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. I have missed you all and I apologize for my absence. Uh, there's been a lot going on. I've just been dealing with a lot of life stuff, I'm trying to be present in the process. And one highlight is a homecoming weekend and helping my teenage daughter uh, prepare for that. And I don't know if any of you have teenagers <laughs> uh, in, in high school, but there are a lot of preparations involved in that and a lot of milestones along the way too. And one of the things that I'm realizing is that I don't have a lot of time left before my oldest graduates high school and goes off to college and I have a limited window of time to impart all of the wisdom that I've acquired during my lifetime and also to be able to really experience these special moments and milestones leading up to graduation and this next chapter uh, of life and it's it's kind of intense. As hectic as it was, I'm really glad that I got to experience those things. I also went out of town for a plant-based lifestyle medical conference, which was fantastic and so inspiring. And I got to meet a lot of incredible doctors and I even met a psychiatrist, which was kind of cool. Heard some incredible presentations and I even had the opportunity to uh, work behind the scenes uh, during the conference and have some great conversations with uh, some of the uh, doctors who presented during the course of the weekend. And I'm so grateful that I got to be a part of that. And it was just amazing. And the energy was just so positive and it just felt like family and it was wonderful. I thoroughly enjoyed myself and it was so good to be back together again after two years of virtual conferences. And there were moments, to be honest with you, where I felt like, oh, you know, I should vlog or I should uh, do a video about this or film that. And there was a lot going on and I had so many incredible conversations. And I think just for me, it was really powerful to be present in the moment. And I'm really working on that in my life. And maybe you can relate. What happens to the flying monkeys after the narcissist dies? Well, the short answer or my short answer is it depends. Like, comment, share, and subscribe if you'd like. There are so many variables that come into play in narcissistically abusive relationships. I wanted to break that down a little bit and then also get into some examples of possible scenarios and how that might work out. I thought of five things to consider when it comes to what happens to the flying monkeys after the narcissist dies. One is the narcissist status, and this could include their socioeconomic status. Uh, this could include things like, say, if it's a family, their status within the family, or if it's a workplace situation, uh, what their status is in the company. The second thing to consider that I thought of is the nature of the relationship. Is it, is it professional? Is it romantic? Is the relationship a family relationship? Is it a neighbor? Is it a friend? Is it just a random stranger type encounter? Is it maybe a con artist or scamming kind of a situation? A third thing to consider is the number of targets. Is this like a one-on-one -on -one dynamic? Or is there a whole group of folks that are being affected by the narcissist? and that the flying monkeys as a result or by association are consequently dealing with. Fourthly, you might wanna consider the type of abuse. Are we talking about say physical abuse? Say for example, in a marriage dynamic or another romantic relationship? Are we talking about sexual abuse? Are we talking about say just psychological abuse? Are we talking financial abuse? And is that financial within the context of a marriage or is that financial within the context of someone being conned or scammed? So, and also what are the consequences that maybe go along with that abuse? Uh, is there jail time maybe, or some other kind of, uh, some other form of prosecution or persecution that could result from the type of abuse? Or is it one of those things where it's just kind of, you know, in the gray area where the narcissist may or may not get called out or busted for the abuse. Uh, 
because it's kind of like, it's kind of gray. It's not a crime, but it's also not the best behavior. So that's something to consider too. You might want to consider the duration of the relationship. Are we talking about like a hit it and quit it relationship? Are we talking about like a, a dating relationship that maybe lasts for months to maybe a few years? Are we talking about a long-term marriage? Are we talking about a, a workplace dynamic that's maybe a couple years uh, in the making or a couple years old? In general, I think it all falls apart to some degree. It could be one of those kind of long drawn out things where it takes a while for it to kind of fade to black or it could just come crashing down suddenly or just all blow up at once and then be over with. I thought of a few examples of how this might play out. Say for example, the dynamic is the narcissist and the flying monkeys are kind of a part of a casual con game or a scam. This type of dynamic might end suddenly because there's an urgency to move on to the next lick for the flying monkey because one, they can't afford to wait around, you know, if they're dependent, say financially on conning or scamming people, they're gonna wanna hurry up and find somebody else to target. So they're gonna kind of scoot along quickly and, you know, either partner up with another narcissist that's kind of more alpha, <laughs> so to speak, or they're gonna go ahead and find their own lick or, or find their own target. In that case, I think things are gonna end dramatically or urgently when the narcissist dies because there's just no time to lose and especially in this economy. Second example that I came up with is the narcissist and the flying monkeys are part of a family that's narcissistic and there's that family dynamic there. This might be a little bit more drawn out and there may be a shifting or a shuffling of roles like if the, when the narcissist passes away one of the flying monkeys may take it upon themselves to step into the narcissist role and kind of pick up where they left off. And I've mentioned this in previous videos, in narcissistic families, there's like a toxic pecking order that's there. And there's also a code of silence. You know, nobody talks about the elephant in the room and nobody talks about the toxic behavioral dynamics that are taking place. It's a lifestyle. So that might be the case. So we're talking more of a gradual playing out of the flying monkey's role. If they are not really a leader or they're not really interested, then they may just kind of back away or kind of fade into the background. Uh, but there may be a setup within the family dynamic where you know they might feel like whatever's happening, if it's key to the survival of the family, then they may step into that role, fill the shoes, to keep it going. Third example that I came up with is the flying monkeys may also have kind of a victim mentality. Uh, and if they maybe don't, they may adopt it or they may increasingly become increasingly more of a victim. And in that case, they may use the narcissist passing as an opportunity to seek attention for themselves, or they may engage in a competition, say with other people around the narcissist passing who may have been affected as well and compete over who's most affected. Depending on what the nature of the relationship is, they may sink into kind of a depression because they don't have anything to do or if they were benefiting in some way from being connected with the narcissist, then that kind of might fade away just because the narcissist isn't around anymore and they may kind of in a self-piteous way feel badly for themselves like woe is me i i don't have access to this that and the other because you know the, the narcissist is is dead the fourth example that i thought of of how this might play out is in the form of cognitive dissonance the flying monkeys may try to convince themselves that the narcissist was a better person than they actually were or that they their character was better than it actually was 
uh, just so that one, they can feel better about themselves or maybe to, to pacify themselves over the fact that the narcissist isn't there and that they are losing whatever benefits went along to being uh, connected to that individual. A narcissistic boss who's passed away may fall under this category where their reports or certain reports who acted as flying monkeys may just be struggling with cognitive dissonance like and speaking about their boss uh, in a higher manner than maybe they ought to when it really comes down to the way that the boss treated others and just conducted themselves in general, their moral code or lack thereof. Apl this could apply in the context of a friend group or uh, an acquaintance uh, dynamic where people who were acting as flying monkeys within the context of a friend group on behalf of the narcissist in the group were, are speaking more highly of them than they ought to. Trying to convince themselves that maybe the narcissist wasn't as catty or as much of a liar or as obnoxious or backbiting or backstabbing as maybe they actually saw that they were or thought that they were. This could also apply in the case of a narcissistic neighbor and other neighbors maybe who were acting on behalf of the narcissistic neighbor, speaking more highly of them than they ought to, and really wrestling with just what they saw and experienced and maybe even how the neighbor treated them and maybe even feeling guilty about the neighbor passing and not wanting to be that person <laughs> to speak ill of the dead or what have you but in the process kind of denying by their behavior, maybe some of the bad behavior that was going on in the form of the way that they treated some of the other people in the neighborhood. What are your thoughts about what happens to the flying monkeys after the narcissist dies? Comment below and share. Let's talk about it. When the narcissist dies, there are a number of possibilities of what might happen to the flying monkeys and certainly I'm not gonna be able to cover them all in this video, but I outlined some of my thoughts about what might happen, and hopefully you can come up with some more and share those in the comments below, but also uh, you may have some additional thoughts about the examples that I shared. Regardless of what happens to the flying monkeys after the narcissist dies, I think the more important thing is for you to be able to identify the flying monkeys as flying monkeys and to be able to make some good decisions about the extent to which you are going to deal with those individuals knowing that they were flying monkeys and that you will prioritize your health and well-being, mind, body, and spirit going forward. You're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.